We're on paragraph E. Yes, we're continuing with um, Derech Hashem. We are in Dalit Dalit. We're in, we're in Chilek Dalit, part four. And we are now up to paragraph E, chapter four. And in this Chilek, as it's named, the Ramchal focuses in on mitzvos. And what's very exciting about this Chilek of the Sefer is where he takes everything that he's taught us until now about the whole construct of the Bria and HaKadosh Baruch Hu's, um, purpose and all the different components in, the, in, the crea- in his creation. And now he explains to us how the mitzvahs fit in. And um, as he opened up the, this chilek, he, he um, enumerated that there are different level, levels, maybe the wrong word. There are different types of mitzvahs. There are some mitzvahs that are constant. There are some mitzvahs that are daily, some mitzvahs that only come from time to time, some mitzvahs that you gotta do something to have that mitzvah. So now we are up to the daily mitzvahs, and now we are gonna begin chapter four. There are two um, jobs, two worships that have been placed upon us to serve Hashem every single day. Vehein, Kriyashma, Vehatvila. Those two are Shema and prayer is um, uh, the Shemona Asrei. Vehena Kriya Shema Ubizman Deis Hamikdash the Tanu Deis Hamikdash Hatmidim. There were the daily offerings, Vehamusafim, and the additional offerings such as on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Vehad and Nevoi Yonon. Now I'll explain it, explain them to you. O Achas Hine Kriya Shema. So he begins with Kriyashma, the Inyana, its concept, Yehuda Yisbarach the Kabbalah's Oma Kusa. It is Hashem's unity, Hashem's oneness, which he is going to explain in a moment, and accepting upon yourself the yoke of heaven. So these are this is a real critical line in the Ramchal because right here in these in these five words, he sums up the, the core purpose of Shema. And that is Yehudo Yisborach. Hashem's Yehud, his unity, his oneness. Ve Kabbalos Ol Mahuso, accepting the yoke of his kingdom. Ve ha Inyan, so now just on a simple level, and then we'll, we'll see how the Ramchal um, embellishes. Yehudo Yisborach, the fact that Hashem is one. That's as opposed to the many other religions that believe in many gods. Shema Yisrael, listen to Israel, Hashem Elokeinu. Hashem is our God, Hashem Echad. God is one. We do not believe in multiple gods. We believe in only one God. That's very central to Judaism. And that is at the core of Shema. And then the second point is Kabos O Malchuso, accepting the yoke of his kingdom. That means accepting that responsibility, accepting upon ourselves everything that Hashem, um, everything that entails. Okay, let's continue. Vihine, Veha Inyan, the concept is, so now he's going to embellish and he's going to connect this to the big picture. Hashem has created all different types of beings. Alyon of the Sachtonim. Um, ones that exist above and ones that exist below. Luchanim Gashmiim, spiritual and physical. The Siddam the Siddharm Shonim, and he arranged them with the different orders. And he gave into um Bhok, into he set into into a law, into a rule, every single one of them is able to do its job and perform its deeds. And to bring, bring things about. Different environments and different ways. According to how Hashem um, distinguished and how he divided things, every single one of them. However, even though we look at the world and we see so many millions and thousands of different creations, each one is a unique. Nonetheless, the root of it all 
and the, the cause of it all is one, it's Hashem. The Indians are moving b'shtei b'chinus. They can be understood in two ways. B'chinus ha-metziyus or b'chinus ha In regards to existence, in regards to action. But b'chinus ha-metziyus, regarding existence, ma'shikavar b'arnu b'chilek rishon, this is what we've already explained in the first chilek. Ech kol ha-metziyus kulem t'luyim bo yisbarach v'nimshach ha-miratzona. How everything that exists depends on him and is drawn from his will. Which is not the case with his existence. His existence is, is one that is intrinsically necessary and not dependent on anything else. This is a, a concept that we've come across in this Sefer numerous times that the only being that its, that its existence is necessary is Hashem himself. Everything else only exists as a result of God's will. God himself is the only thing that must exist. And his existence is the only existence which is not dependent on anything else. Everything else is dependent at the very least on HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself, but in most cases dependent on many other things as well. In the Mitzius Elav, Mitzad Mashu Yisbarach Shemo, Rot of Hem, and the Kaimim Bertsoni. That's what we just explained. Ubuchinas ha Pu'ula. And in regards to action, who, it's as follows. She'avo bishem nitan bechu kalm shalani vroim lishlo to the inyanim. Even though HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave over into the nature of all of his creations a certain um, mastery, a control over their matter. Whatever their abilities encompass, they could they could be capable of very great things. Each one according to uh, what he said in the nature of its ability, of its actions. Nonetheless, even though they seem to be capable of very awesome things, the angels. They can do such amazing things. Human beings can invent, can, can accomplish, can build skyscrapers and atom bombs, can do unbelievably powerful things. Nonetheless, this is all only because, only a result of the power and the control that God uh, gave over to us. He is the true master in control and all capable. Everything that they do, that they can accomplish, it is only what HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave over to them and gave them the ability to do. He can increase and can detract their ability at any moment according to his will. So the first layer of appreciating um, God's um, oneness is that his existence is unique, that it is not dependent on anything else, whereas everything else in the world only exists by God's will. And secondly, his, he has ultimate control and ability. Everything else in this world that may, be, may have a tremendous ability they have tremendous power. Their power ultimately rely, it depends on God. It comes from God willing that power, that ability. Now the Ramchal continues to a second layer. Delving deeper into this matter, what we discover is according to the orders that God in his wisdom put in place for the perfection of all creations. Kamosh is a kind of a chilek rishon, as we mentioned in the first part of the book. There are many elements of ra, of evil, that exist in the world. Whether that is a result of man's free will, that man will, um, will occasionally choose to sin and will introduce elements of evil into the world 
or things that God introduces into, into the world out of a necessity, out of uh, his decree, either to, to punish the wicked or things of that sort. This creates the existence of evil, creates a very uh, a great philosophical problem that it creates an, a, a, an illusion, if you will, a, an image that something exists that is contrary to God's will. Um, God only wants good and he is to- total goodness. And it seems to be a chilul Hashem, the fact that there should be wicked people in the world that are able to do destructive and corruptive things. How, how is that in line with an idea that, that everything that exists in the world is in God's control and depends on God's will? How then, how then do you justify and do you explain the existence of evil? Omnam. Indeed, anyone who knows the ways of God and he delves into understanding their, their, their concepts, Yeda, that person knows, this is all part of God's master plan. These are all ways of bringing things about in a very deep way. They all are in line with the perfection of, of God's creation, and they all lead to that. As we explained in the first chilek of the Derech Hashem. So this is, he's touching now on something which we dealt with much earlier on in the Sefer um, about the existence of evil in the world and how that's necessary for God's uh, ultimate plan for the world. And just to kind of say it in the in the in a nutshell the idea was essentially to create uh an equilibrium to create a a world of free will where man earns his uh um his accomplishments in the spiritual realm i mean for that reason it was necessary to have evil in the world the result is that indeed HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that truly is governing all. That's a soul of Only his advice um, will stand. Which is bringing his goodness and completion to, to his creations. As we've mentioned there. But for the truth of the, for the, the completion and the truth of, of, of his purpose, it has to come about through these ways. Based on the foundations of the uh, awesome wisdom and the true goodness. What will be known and will be clear at the end of this process, at the end of these many steps, is the fact that he, that God alone is one and only one. He's the one that's causing everything to happen. Uh, to bring to the ultimate um, uh, ultimate goal, which is the ultimate good, as we mentioned. So now the Ramchal continues to delve deeper. So point number one, is that even though there exists in the world elements of wickedness and evil that seem to be contrary to God's will, um, that is a mistake. Because ultimately, God himself willed these things to exist. God himself wants these things in the world because they are the, they're necessary for, the, for Hashem's ultimate goal with the world um, um, and he's going to explain that in greater depth right now. That is, we've already explained, the totality, the general rule, 
of all the different ways um, that all the different processes that exist in the world. Hashem created evil so that man should overcome it. And to, in its place, establish in themselves, meaning in mankind, and in the creation, goodness. There are very, very big overarching concepts and statutes and laws and roots and foundations that Hashem has set in place for to be perfected in all of their different ways. There are many details in which there are elements of ra, elements of evil, of imperfection that exist in the creation. Areas of where there is certain power and control given to evil. And different areas that affect the relationship of man with, with him. In that which he's placed under evil and amidst evil. In, in a way where man is obligated, is charged with the, the mission of overcoming evil and escaping from its snare. The inner mitzius atov is pash his pashto this has this has go fiachona rab and kavsho. And man was given this mission of the prolification of good through suppressing and overcoming evil. The Amnim Shorish called the Tusa Rab Pulosa Ushtita so. The bottom line is that the the source, the root of the existence of evil and all of its power and control is Hashem himself. Hashem hides himself that he should not be revealed in his total truth to all to the degree that he hides himself that is the degree of evil that he allows to exist. As we explained in the first Chalik, this was something that the Ramchal explained in great length in the, in the beginning of the Sefer. But I thought he originally said that he didn't bring evil into the world. That God so, didn't bring. So he, he, said, he said that there were two stages. He said that there was, he created an element of evil in the world in that man should have uh, some type of challenge in order to do to do good and to earn his spiritual stature. But he also explained that the way God originally created the world, it was very, very minor. It was, it was not, it was a, uh, it was, it was a small, it was a very small job for man to do to overcome that evil. But then when, when Adam ate from the Eitzadas, and he committed that first sin, Adam introduced a whole new layer of, of evil into the world, and he kind of made man's job twofold. That we first have to kind of, we first have to reverse the effects of that first sin, of the cheta, of the etadas, of eating from the tree of knowledge, and then uh, after Tchias Mason, after the resurrection, we have the original uh, job, if you will, that, that God designed for us. That might be what you're thinking of, Paul. Um, I hope that's helpful. Okay, let's continue. The Shorikol Bittol Hara, the source of all nullification of evil, the Havaraso, and removing evil, the Kova Batov, and establishing all of creation in goodness, who Yilui Amita It is the revelation of God's oneness. That's what it all depends on. 
Vumash Amar Akasi, that's what the Pasuk means when it says, Wa'u Ata Kiani Anihu. You, um, you shall now see that, that, that it is I. The cause of and we also have another puzzle is the Mante do Vitamino, in order that they should know and they should believe. The Fonilo notes are Kale, the Achrailo Yia. Bafana, um, excuse me, before me there is no God, and after me there is no other. The Nimsha says, Sov Tikun Kolabria, Reislam Chao. The perfection, the, the, the tikkun of the entire creation, tali the gili yichudis barach, depends on this one point of the revelation of the oneness of God. He is, was, and always will be. Constantly one. The difference is, is that right now, it's, it's always true. The difference is that right now it's not completely revealed. Will also love in the future is gamma the gamma the kolabrim. It'll be completely revealed to all of creation, to everything that is created. Kamosh is a as we've mentioned. By Yom Ahu Yihi Hashem Echadish Melachad. On that day, Hashem will be one, and His name will be one. This, by the way, is the pasuk that we recite at the end of Aleinu, right? V'neamar v'hayu Hashem the Melachad Kolat v'hayu. And that day, meaning the end of days, God will be one and his name will be one. That's referring to this idea that in the end of days, when the world reaches its, its, uh, its completion, its perfection, its ultimate goal, that, will, that what will bring that about is the entire world recognizing that God is one. We, we have the for, we have the fortune of having Hashem's Torah mitis, His Torah of truth. Yodima emes, we know the truth. We can testify to it. That's what the pasuk, pasuk means. But some edai ni umashem. You will be my witnesses, so says Hashem. Another pasuk in Isaiah and Yeshayim. Zez chos gadolano. This is a tremendous schos, a tremendous merit that we have. So the Ramchal was painting a picture here that Shema is really central in. Um, the purpose of creation, um, and it's it's a a unique opportunity that was given to the Jewish people to kind of jump ahead of the game, so to speak. That we twice daily we declare, we testify to the this reality, this truth that God is one, which is the ultimate purpose of creation which the rest of the world will not recognize until the end of days, until the, that, final, that final day. But we have the, the schos to do it twice daily. And this idea of this being the ultimate purpose of the creation is also in the words themselves. Shema so listen, listen, O Israel, Hashem elukeinu, Hashem, who is your God, Hashem Echad. That God is one. So there is a interpretation that Rashi offers from Chazal for that Pasuk as well, that it means Hashem Elokeinu, God, which is currently only your God, Hashem Echad. In the end, he will be the one God, the God of the entire world. He'll be recognized as the entire world by the entire world as the one God. That idea is actually um, hinted to in the Pasuk of Shema itself. Now, why do we have to do it twice? Why do we need to do Shema twice? Do it once, once every single day. I understand that I have to do it every single day because it's, it's so fundamental it's so critical. It's something that every day was not complete without Shema. That's the purpose of all of creation. I can understand that. 
Why twice? Hine, Klal Hanhaga Shala Olam Azem is Halekas Lanhaga Yom Vanhaga Galayim. The operation of the world on a daily basis is divided into two parts the daytime and the nighttime. As we explained in the third portion of this Sefer, and in every morning and every evening, there is a renewal of the, the order of the world and the order of the, of the minister of the, uh, the angelic officers, the angels that uh, operate, that run the, the operations of the world. We, the Jewish people, we need to, we, the Jewish people, we need to, we're obligated to testify to this truth of the oneness of Hashem in every facet, every different way. Perush, this means to say, Bein bevechinas hametzios, whether in regards to the existence of the world, that Hashem has oneness in that dimension, that He's the only being whose existence is is absolute. And everything that exists exists as, an ex as a result of him and depends on him. That, in that regard, he's he's one. Rather, in regards to control and power and ability, he is the only one that being that's truly in control. Everything else only has power and ability that it's granted by God. Thirdly, whether in regards to Hanhaga, to guiding and uh, orchestrating the, 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 the events of the world. Even though there are many causes that affect the world, in very big ways and very deep ways, Adam Asabev, the cause of all causes is none other than El Echad, it's only one. That's God. It's only one ultimate cause, which is God, which is Hashem, who, who is bringing the entire world to its uh, true perfection. Even though this is not revealed right now, this is not clear. You wouldn't know this from walking around on the street and looking at the world. The MS, However, the truth, this is the truth of the matter. This will be revealed and known in the end of all. So here the Ramchal, he's taking the idea of Yichud Hashem, of Hashem Echad, and he's taking it to, to much, much deeper and broader sense than I think what we're used to thinking. Let me just sum things up. Give me one second. We're used to thinking of Hashem Echad, God is one, as a concept of monotheism versus polytheism. We believe in one God, as opposed to the idol worshipers who believed in many gods, the Romans, the Greeks, and certainly the even earlier ancient uh, religions of the world that Avram Avinu um, countered. We believe in one God. We do not believe in the concept of a, of a holy trinity, whatever in the world that means. Um, 
it's much, that is a very shallow understanding of what this means. This idea of Hashem Echad, that God is one, is much, much, much deeper than that. It's not just a concept of how many gods are there. It's true, the Ramchal is writing, that this is a, a reality, a truth of the world that exists on every plane and in every dimension, that, there, that God is one. And what the way the Ramchal explains what that means is that, that God is the only true existence. It's hard to articulate this in words, but I'm, I'm going to try my best. This is very much the idea of ein od milvado. There's nothing that exists other than God. That goes, so the, the concept being that in every dimension, there's the own, nothing exists outside of God. Meaning Hashem is the only thing that is the only thing that exists that doesn't depend on anything else. Everything else that exists in the world only exists because Hashem wants it to exist. So not that's, that's more than just saying that God is super powerful. What that's saying is, is that everything else that exists in the world doesn't really exist. Now, this is a confusing concept and there's a lot of people that misunderstand this concept. And they walk around saying, Enod Movado, with some type of funny idea that everything's an illusion and it's like a dream, everything's a dream and it doesn't really exist. That's, I don't believe that to be the truth. I don't believe that to be a, an accurate understanding of Enod Movado. That the, what I believe to be a, a more accurate understanding of Enod Movado, which is what the Ramchal is explaining, the, the idea of Enod Malvado, nothing exists other than God, is a, a, it's a manifestation of Hashem Echad, that God is one, which means that, not, that everything is a result of God's will, meaning there's nothing that exists independent of God. That's the critical point. The, the things that God created what exists in this world, this safer, this desk, it's real. It's not, it's not a facade, it's not a dream, it's real. But it only exists because God wills it to exist. And because that is, that, because that is true, that means that God's existence is different than everything else in the world in that Everything else in the world is, is its existence is not essential. Its existence is a, a man, it's a manifestation of Hashem's will. And that's also true, writes them how on other dimensions as well, not just what exists in the world, but ability and power, the ability to do things. Right? There's there's matter, the existence of matter, and then there's the ability of, of creations to act and to accomplish and to bring about change. That also is a, a power that is, that is only granted, only granted by God. The secret, the mystery, the, the challenge is that in order to facilitate uh, a world of free will, God had to make it that this was not apparent. This wasn't something that you could see with the naked eye. This, he had to hide himself. And that's why someone who lives in the world and doesn't have a Torah, and doesn't have a tradition, doesn't have a Misora, doesn't have a teacher, doesn't, doesn't have access to this knowledge, is born into the world and just has nothing other than what his eyes see, it's all too easy to make the mistake of thinking that no, all these things that exist in the world exist independent of God. He might have created the world, and you might even you might even accept that there is a creator. But there are I I believe that the majority 
of the world, now I mean the non-Jewish world, who believe in a creator, do not have any remote understanding of this concept of Hashem Echad. I, I, I am convinced that the entire world, with the exception of the Jewish people, and even of the Jewish people, I'm not sure how many understand this, but certainly the entire world, that even the entire world that believe in a creator are under the impression that there is a God, there is a creator, and uh, that's, that's, he created the world, and that's pretty much it. He created the world, he, we all, he created all these different things, they have their certain abilities, and then he kind of set us loose, and he might, you know, come to us and ask us to do things and give us mit mitzvahs and commandments and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But ultimately, bottom line, he created certain things, and once they're created, they exist independent of God. And they uh, they have abilities to act and accomplish and do things independent of God. And what Rambachal is saying is that Hashem allowed that the world to appear that way by withdrawing himself, hiding himself to a certain degree in order to facilitate free will, but it's not the reality. The reality of the world is that Hashem, Hashem Echad, there's only one God and that everything else that exists does not exist independent of God. It only exists as a manifestation of God's will, that God wills it constantly. And everything's ability and power is also only a result of God willing it and God desiring that to exist. And that is something that the entire world will understand when the world comes to its final tikkun, comes to its final purpose in the end of days, the entire world will recognize that Hashem is one. Again, that means something much, much deeper than recognizing that the idols are false. It means recognizing the idea that everything only exists as a manif manifestation of God's will and is depend totally dependent on God. But that is what we, the Jewish people, recite daily, twice every single day, when we say Shema. That is the depth of Shema. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Okay, let's pause here. It's already 8.40. And we'll continue with this chapter next week, continuing with Shema.